Hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Davises Eat. I'm Nikki. I'm Shelly. And what are we eating tonight? We are going back in time to the wonderful 1970s, 1980s, as far back as the 1950s for some of our viewers, and aimed, <laughs> aiming directly at my youthful childhood of the, of the 80s and doing a Hungry Man style Salisbury steak dinner. TV dinner. That's right. So so TV dinners actually came around in the 1950s. And so, and that was one of the so, first ones. Are you sure they weren't radio dinners back then? Well, they might have. No, not in the 1950s. We had TVs. <laughs> we're, we were well beyond the whole fireside okay. chat situation okay. there. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to make Salisbury steak mm -hmm. and in a mushroom and caramelized onion gravy, we're going to, um, I don't know, move things up just a, just a wee bit on the scale of quality, I think, <laughs> I'm hungry, right, man, yeah. um, we're, we're from gonna, frozen TV dinners. We're going to definitely have a, a much better than frozen TV dinner. Yeah. However, now it's not going to be as fast as a TV dinner, No, but from scratch, it's going to taste a whole lot. And not that they were bad. I mean, in a pinch, they're fine. TV dinners, we still eat them and sometimes. The green beans suck. Yeah. I'm not a green bean fan anyway. I like green beans like two ways. Yeah, but they suck. And that was definitely not one of the ways. <laughs> they were horrible. So, so that particular garbage. That particular dinner came with mashed potatoes. Yep. Mashed which potatoes. I've already made, and they're in the oven. They're they're not bad. Um, Those and they weren't bad. Two Salisbury steaks. Right. In a, yeah. In a, in, a, in, a, in the like in, the V part of the yeah, tray. Yeah, nice little tray with gravy. And some of them came with green beans, and then later they came with corn. And the corn was okay. And we're going to do remember, corn tonight. I don't really remember the green you, beans. Yeah, you, well, I remember the corn. And then okay. some came with brownies. All of them came with brownies. Later they came with peach cobbler. Are you sure you're the right one? I might have a different brand in my you head. You might have a different brand or a different non-Southbury steak. Because the Southbury steak... <laughs> Sounds very thing. You guys can all look it up on YouTube if you want. Not on YouTube, but on the, on the Googles. On the Googles. And it there. had uh, the Salisbury steak in the front here. And then up here was mashed taters. Over here was green beans. And right there in a little square. A little square. square. Like that. Yeah. Was Brownie. Brown. So that's basically what we're doing tonight. However, Sorry. however, I'm also, because I have some delicata squash I needed to use up before they... Um, Went bad. Well, they, uh, winter squash like lasts forever, but I'm I'm tired of having them hang around the kitchen. <laughs> oh. So I steamed those this afternoon, and we're going to, in addition to mashed potatoes, we're going to do a winter squash mash with some butter and brown sugar and a little cream and, honey. and some spices. And honey. 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 Are you put that on too. Local honey. Okay. I always use well, local. Sure. So hey, Jill, welcome. Welcome to the party. Jill, we don't need anybody telling her she's right. She's always right. <laughs> we all know this. You're a good man. But Charlie Brown. Hungry man. Specifically the hungry man. Brown. Okay. No, I know. They I know that I, I remember Peach Cobbler too. Yeah. Um, but what are we drinking? Because we like to do that part. Well, we're doing a little twist. We're doing a couple different things with this. Um, but we're going to do a bourbon sour. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use our wonderful Woodford Reserve bourbon. And we're going to make a, just a, a straight, pretty much straight bourbon sour. And to do that, we've got our Woodford Reserve. And can you give me some ice in this? I am. That's what I was moving around oh, to. Thank you. To get so my rear end was not in the camera frame. Oh, yeah. So we need coke. This is on a per drink basis. So we're making two drinks as well as two of us to start off with. And this is one that if you needed to do a kitty cocktail version, which we will do later, um, instead of bourbon, use soda. Like cola. Cola. Pop. Pop. Soda. Soda. You know. The red, white, and blue, or red and white can. Red, white can, red, white, blue can. So we have four ounces of wood for preserve. And we're going to use fresh squeezed. 
We're squeezed. You know, it's just easier to keep in the refrigerator yeah. than lemons, I, you know. Lemon juice. You can substitute lime juice in if you want. You want three quarters of an ounce. So because we're doubling this up, we're going to go to an ounce and a half. Math. Okay, six fourths of an ounce. We have established that you are good at math and I am and not so good at math. Our wonderful simple syrup. Simple syrup, which is a cup of water and a cup of sugar. Dirt cane white. It's e equal parts. We just made a whole lot this time. We made a lot because we use it. We use it a lot when we do these. We're, so we're doing these. So and we're it keeps. Do another ounce and a half of that. Mm -hmm. And, and then we'll it. put it in a mason jar and seal it up for next week. Yeah. <laughs> you well, want we ice in the ounce? Yeah, I need ice in those. And then we just want to take this. We'll get it. We'll get it. We don't need it anyway. Oh, we didn't change it to. I just changed it back to the big it. one. Yeah. Changed it back. Okay. I did while I was shaking. While well, you were getting nice, I figured that I'd be nice and not have you bend over. Get nice. <laughs> on camera. Moonshine. Yeah. Hey, your moon was shining a little bit. And because I think it needs color, because you know it, it's a little darkish, it's kind of beige. It's okay. Here's what it is. We're gonna add in some cherries, and maybe just a wee bit of cherry juice in mine. Oh, you want cherry juice in yours? Now it's a pretty pink color at the bottom. There you go. So that is a whiskey slash bourbon sour. Now, because we're probably going to drink more than one of these, mm -hmm. we're going to do this a little different the second time we make it. We are. For me, at least. I don't know about you. Well, I think we can do two different ways because I actually like mine topped with something different than you're going to top yours with. What do you like yours topped with? I like mine type topped with Sprite. Oh. As opposed to sweet iced tea. Iced tea. Yeah. Yep. So this this goes really well with sweet iced tea. It does. So that's for later. Or Sprite. Or Sprite. Cheers. Yeah. yeah I'm going to have to top it with something. Woo. Yeah. That'll get you going. It will uh, put the motion in the lotion. No, the lotion in the motion. <laughs> You might want to re rewind, rewind and yeah. rethink that comment. Motion in the motion. Oh, Lubri Chili Davis. Lubricates the facilities. So I can... Yeah, sure. <laughs> yell, yell louder. Yeah, huh? I think I'm going to go work on the Salisbury Let's steak now. <laughs> After I trip over a dog. Oh. Yes. Your mama says the peach cobbler was in a swan suit. Oh, I had the wrong brand. You did. Well, you didn't have the hungry man brand. I did not, apparently. Well, obviously not. Clearly. You know, I mean. Okay. Back in back in those time frames, it was you know set. You know, the, the ladies didn't have the hungry man version. It. Uh, well, yeah, that was clearly marketed to hungry men. Definitely marketed to. Yes, please. I'm going to trip over the dog some more. I tried to kick him up earlier. All right. You want to. stay. So, uh, yeah, yeah flip me. So Salisbury steak has an interesting origin. It does. And it came about in the late 1800s, like very late, like nearly turn of the century, late 1800s. 
Yeah. And you guys are going to get to look at my my uh, two pounds of meat. Well, I'm over making. Why? Why are you over making? I'm over making so I can make hamburgers tomorrow. Oh. So I'm actually dual purposing. Dual purposing some tonight. things. Yeah. Um, so pre planning ahead. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to actually get eight patties give or take out of yeah. this. So how many how many patties do I get for my for my hungry man meal tonight? Because I know that, you know, back in that time frame, there was the Hungry Man mm -hmm. regular, and then there was like the Hungry Man XL, and it had an extra patty. Of yeah, but they were itty bitty thin things. Oh, I know. Yeah, they these were, aren't going to be itty bitty thin. They were counted thin. So, thin. well, it's because TV dinners are no, inexpensive. Yeah, um, they had to fit in the freezer. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell the history of the Salisbury steak as we're cooking the Salisbury steak, and we'll get started here. But, but it's got an interesting history. Um, what we know of as Salisbury steak today is not what it started out to be. Um, but I'm going to make it like we like really? it now and like we make it now. So I have a pound-ish of venison. It always comes packed in a little bit more than a pound. A pound of local beef. And essentially, we're going to make something very similar to a meatloaf. So this is one of those situations where you can put in what you like. Oh, I need ketchup. God. No ketchup. Yeah. Uh, you no, don't have no, to use ketchup. No, 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 no. Or actually, hand me the the A one. Yeah, I'll use A one. Right. Let's use A one. Okay. Let's use A one. Use, use Worcestershire sauce or whatever you want to call it. I have Worcestershire sauce over here. here. Okay. We're not using ketchup. Oh, uh, so no ketchup. We're gonna use A one steak sauce instead of. Yeah, right. Steak sauce. Because these are Salisbury steaks. Yes, they are. Okay. I, I'm not measuring, by the way. Um, you want some hot sauce, too? Roughly a tablespoon of the only one way to look at it, Worcestershire sauce. Lean Always. I'd, I'd be in trouble otherwise. Might be upside down. Little salt. Little pepper. By the way, if you guys don't have a pepper mate, you need a pepper mate. I'll tell you what, gentlemen, let your wives just buy there themselves because those bastards are on my Facebook feed every All time. All the time. <laughs> and in my Google Gmail promotions thing now. So Onion powder. If your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, whoever special wants some peppermint. Want some garlic? Yeah. Okay, well, hand me inside the... I use pureed garlic so it melts in a little bit. Um, so it's about two tablespoons of A1. Thank you. And about a tablespoon of Worcestershire. And I probably put in a teaspoon of salt. Same with onion powder. Um, pepper, probably a little bit more, but only because we like it. I'm going to use pureed garlic so it's it kind of disappears inside the blend. So that's probably the equivalent of at least two cloves, maybe more. We'll leave that out for later. I also have um, something that I get at Trader Joe's. Is my right side up or upside down? I'm right side up. Okay. Um, so if you don't have this, no, no big loss necessarily. Um, you could substitute with some soy sauce if you wanted to, or a little bit extra Worcestershire, mm -hmm. but. What if you want? What was it again? It is um, multi-purpose umami seasoning blend, and umami, umami in Japanese culture is actually an extra taste. Oh. So we have sweet, sour, bitter, and umami. Um, help me out. Sweet, sour, bitter, sugar, sweet, sour, bitter. bitter. Help, salt. people. Salt. salt, salty. Thank you. Oh my gosh. So umami is the fifth. Um, and it's not something that Western Europeans are familiar with because we don't, we just, we just aren't. Um, but it adds, it just adds another dimension to what we're doing. I'm going to use some gloves here so I don't have to. Get your gloves out. Oh yeah, folks. Wash my hands. This is a perfect place to put your gloves. You see that? Oh yeah, it's like perfect. They might not be able to see that actually. Perfect just the bowl. 
Yes, they're just plain old. This one came from one that My has was. HD in its name. They're orange. Store. It was orange. Orange, lots of orange there. I like the black ones, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to have to deal with digging it out of my fingernails on live. Oh, man. So, um, Salt, you know what? Um, breadcrumbs or no? Well, yeah. Okay, well, then you'll have to get them because mine. No. <laughs> so, normally we use breadcrumbs or oatmeal and an egg to bind all this together. But tonight we're using garlic paste. Well, I don't know that it really needs it. I mean, meatloaf's one thing. When you make a meatloaf, it, it tends to fall apart. These are going to be so little, it's not that big of a deal. And you know what? They're going to be covered in gravy. So if they do fall apart, so be it. Yeah. Okay. They fall apart to fall apart. So you don't want to over. Complain about it. You don't want to over mix. Where are the breadcrumbs? I actually don't because I don't like them. Okay. That's why I don't like meatloaf. It's got breadcrumbs in it. Well, there we go. That you don't want to put breadcrumbs in our. Okay, so I'm going to cut this in half, and Jeff Davis is going to get me a plastic bag. So I can save part of this for tomorrow. I'll form patties with it later. Oh, so our pet burger patties are going to have Worcestershire and oh yeah, and yeah, hell yeah, and garlic too. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. There you go. All right, so now I have about a pound of meat. Give tomorrow's take. dinner. <laughs> right there. Maybe lunch. <laughs> Maybe. I like to play with meat. I'm weird. Most people I know hate raw meat. I love it. Well, it's you got your on too. Oh, no, I'd be that way otherwise. Bless you. Oh, that's right. They're all the day now. They're looking at me going. Oh, hey. Um, to get equal burgers or patties, you can weigh these if you wanted to and, you know, divide a pound by three or four or five or whatever you're trying to get to. I'm doing four. That's okay. I'm going to score it so everything is equal-ish, mostly equal. Um, if you can eyeball it, feel free. But if you can't, that's one way to. So are do we it. making Salisbury steak balls, or are we making Salisbury steak patties? Are we making Salisbury steak patties. Yes. That's and good. you can have the fourth one because Steve's and I won't. I was about to say I'm the hungry man, so. And they're, um, you know, these are they're burger size. I always make them burger size. You can make them bigger. You can make meatballs. I mean, what you do at this point is up that's to you. Um, Rick. Thinner makes them easier to cook, though, because they will cook They faster. cook faster. Yeah. So there's a Phoebe size. And you want them roughly equal because they will yeah, cook they, at they the cook same easy. time. Yeah. Um, and these are going to, I added venison um, because, because the have, burger was, like, super, super fatty. And it would have, like, turned into a hockey puck by itself. I've noticed that about that burger. And these are not huge, you know, these are four ounces, thereabouts. Which is why Jeff's gonna get two. So roll your balls around, give them a nice little slap. Please be gentle with those. <laughs> and you can turn it to that if you want to. Well, just get ready to. Well, I slap. <laughs> the last one. All right. There we go. I'm going to remove my gloves. See the dogs? Yep. Looking for leftovers and scraps. <sighs> okay. So now we're going to, we had about a tablespoon of butter in here. Move, babies. And I turned the heat down so the butter didn't burn, so we're going to crank that back up. We want a nice sear on um, both sides, so we're going to let it go for a couple minutes and then flip it and let it go for a couple more minutes. And while we're doing that, I'm going to take a drink. Oh, well, good deal. We'll get her off of that. We'll get her back to the, the big old camera. Hello, everybody. So, oh, yeah, that's will put you on your tail. That's okay. I'll get text messages later. For who? I'm sure people I'm related to. That's oh. usually how it works. 
Oh, somebody enjoyed the drink tonight. I'm just now getting down to the cherry juice. Um, so we are going to get a nice brown sear on both sides. They're, she's, <laughs> they're sort of fine if I don't trip over them. And then I'm going to take them out of the pan. They're going to render out some fat because that burger really is fatty. So I'll have a little bit extra fat in the pan and I'm going to start the gravy and then we'll put the patties, the Salisbury steak patties back in the pan and let them finish cooking at that point. And then yeah. we'll move on to the other, the other pieces while they're finishing up because oh. the other pieces don't take very long. Oh, well, I didn't know. I'm just kind of just spinning around, chilling out. So I caramelized onions yesterday because we put some on some pizza. Yes, we did. So they're not the prettiest things right now. They're a little they're grayish, grayish <laughs> but, but they're fine. I promise. Well, they can't see them right now. Anyway. No, no. Um, but onions take a while to caramelize, and I probably let them go on really low heat for about an hour to get them down to. Um, a nice soft caramelized state. Uh, so we're going to add those into the gravy along with some mushrooms and some other ingredients <laughs> that didn't last long. So Salisbury steak, while well, those are kind of cooking. Mm -hmm. History. Oh, you're going to tell me the history? All right, you tell. Does uh, anybody know? I'll, I'll see if anybody knows first. And you can't Google it. You can't look it up. I'm sorry. I do it all the time. Which is okay enough, so go ahead. I'm going to flip, flip here while we're waiting to see if anybody knows. Do you need another one or just these? I'll take another one. All right, those are flipped. Coming back in. Okay, let me see. You might know. No. Nobody even took a guess. No one took a guess. Nobody took a guess. What country of origin is a Salisbury steak? Oh, that's a good one. Is it German? Is it Ireland and Scotland and England and the UK? Is it British? So, anybody? Um, so here's, here's the deal about that. I actually, yeah, it, it's not, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm texting my memory here. So I, I flip these guys over. We'll let them go another minute and then I'll build the gravy. Um, but Salisbury steak came about in the age of health and wellness as it was kind of coming about in the U S back when we had all the, um, Oh, like the hot water spring spa kinds of places and places in the Alps where you could go get cured from tuberculosis or consumption. That, no, you're fast forward about 40 years. Whoa. Um, when we were starting to understand, you know, dietary things. Debbie Moore says it's from the U.S. of A. Hey, there you go. Steffi Road says Switzerland. Um, so maybe a little bit of a cross of both there. Um, so, so that's kind of the, the catalyst here. And it was a gentleman by the name of Salisbury, his Ooh. last name. His last name was Salisbury. Huh? And he was a physician. And he a, a was, doctor yes. Of sorts, huh? um, and he was all about high, boy, chili, um, diets that were high in Ooh. not not protein, but meat specifically. My sort of diet, right there. Yeah. Um, so, so sorry. Um, there you go. The original Salisbury steak was not called Salisbury steak. It was called a, a um, Hamburg style fillet. <laughs> and it was made out of all of the lean parts of beef. Um, the lean leftover parts? 
Well, I know like the lean parts of beef and not necessarily the leftover parts that were um, chopped, not ground, but chopped and then formed into these so patties. When did we get cheap? Um, I don't know when we got cheap with it. Maybe in, in the, the 1950s. And <laughs> Swanson said, let's make this this way. Maybe they had to cover it with gravy because it was cheap. It thick. What? Sticks are awfully thick. Oh, yeah. You wanted them thinner? I was thinking that they would be, but mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. I don't do thin steaks. So look at these bad I mean, well, they're not done. I'm taking them out so I can build gravy. I mean, those are fillet size, though. Yeah. They're so little pink. Mm. And then there was another name that it was going by, and, and it was served in restaurants with these names. Mm -hmm. And it was it was this un, uncanny, very fancy, frilly French name that, that meant new. Nouveau? Um... And it had, yeah, it, it's stick. just not quite, but so it's just, it has an interesting history, but it wasn't served with gravy or anything like that. There was no seasoning, nothing. It was just the, it was a hamburger steak, essentially. Um, and that, you know, that was 1890s era. So you're going to make a roux real quick? I'm going to make a roux shortly. I'm out of room. I'm out of room. So you're out of room for your yeah. roux? And I am going to add some of these onions in here yep, to get them kind of going again. First, warm up the caramelized onions. Okay. Well, they'll cook down some more. Um, guys, this was like, this is a three cup bowl and it was slightly less than three cups. Although total, it would have been, we put some on pizza last night and that was five onions. <laughs> so, that tells you how much they like really cook down. What else is in there? Um, so I put a little bit of red wine, yeah. garlic, I knew it. Um, thyme, because I always do, and yeah. um, what else? Worcestershire. Oh, no. I'm pretty. I'm. I'm pretty. It's like that's your common your everyday thing. It is. But that's okay. Okay, I am cutting. Oh, mushrooms. Uh, I'm going to put you back on the cutting board. There we go. I'm quartering mushrooms because they have to be in big enough hunks my husband can pick them out. That's right. We don't want any shrooms and my stuff. I like the flavor that they add to the gravy. I just don't want to chew them. If you don't want the stems in your stuff, de-stem them. Save those for vegetable stock later, but I don't mind. And yes, I'm cutting about half a container because I have a cork. Yeah, they cook down to like nothing. So we're gonna add those in. You're gonna have to watch out there. You want to trip over. That's why I just kind of threw them. <laughs> kind of launched them. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're probably right. Here, would you throw this away, please? So why did you Thank put you. Those in before making the roux. Um, so they can get some okay. color on them and start to cook down before that gravy gets built. Okay. And I thought you made the roux first. Well, you can. Right. Um, well, you know, if questions. you if you were just making a roux, you'd be straight butter and flour, or fat and flour, yeah. bacon grease, something, but typically butter. Yeah. Um, in this case, when we add the flour, the grease is in there, even though it's kind of disappeared, right? Um, when we add the flour, it's going to, yes, adhere to all of these vegetables in here. And then when we add the beef stock here in a little bit, it will start picking up. So if you tried to make the gravy and then put all of the mushrooms in, they, they wouldn't, the flavor wouldn't be as, it just, it wouldn't be as good. How's that? I totally believe you. Will you hand me a Sprite, please? Oh. I will hand you a twist up. How's that? You can hand me a generic Sprite. That's fine. Holy moly. Well, One then, watch my... Twist up. Thank you. Mushrooms do their thing. Shrivel and shrink. Mm-hmm. All right. So 
So what else is there for me to do? I could definitely stir. That's yeah, that's my thing. <laughs> I mean, you can stir. I'll let you. I'm good at this. Once we get the gravy built and the steaks back in, I'll move on to squash and corn. All right. Well, now, what would you just you just want buttered salty corn, or do you want fried corn with onions and stuff? Uh, butter salt. No, no fry okay. with no onions. Uh, this will be plenty of onions for for me. For, okay, that's fine. For like a week. <laughs> like a week. I already had onions yesterday. You had a few on your pizza. They're good. I made them just up on the tail. I'll still survive. So, um, oh, that smells yummy. So, if anybody likes French onion soup, this is kind of the base to that too. Maybe without the mushrooms. The yeah. yeah. Because then all you do is add a whole bunch of beef stock to it. Well, we have that here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how we're going to make gravy. Well, we're going to add less than a whole bunch of beef stock. Yeah. Well, another minute or two. I, I'm just stirring away. Being useful. You are very useful. You don't have to constantly stir. It'll be, it'll be okay. Nope. Okay. I'm stirring. Okay, you stir. That is my task on Thursday nights is the stir. I either make drinks or I stir something. That's about it. I'm going to talk about delicata squash. What? Delicata squash. Delicata. They need to see that, don't they? They do. I'm going to. I'll do that. You go back over there. Okay. I can take a quick break there. There's some delicata squash, folks. Hey. <laughs> okay, so these are little delicata squash. And you can see they were, you know, various shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. And I steamed them in, um, I've got a, a multi-cooker that I steamed these in for about an hour. And I, I poke them just like you do a potato. I steamed them. Is that they're flat on one side? Yeah, well, because they were sitting on a rack, yeah. Yeah. Um, alternatively, you can roast these in the oven. Oh. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut into one so you can see it, and then I'll move back to the gravy. Yeah. So they have quite a few seeds in them. So, so these three really will probably make enough um, squash for me to eat for dinner. In reality, there's not going to be a whole lot here. But we'll scrape these seeds out, and then we'll get to that meat. Well, right now we're going to, yeah, that delicatas are that way. Yeah. Um, right now we're going to finish that gravy off, though. That's right. Get it I'm going. Step out of the way. So we're going to put at least two cups of water in. So we need at least two tablespoons of flour. Two tablespoons. And if we get to stirring and it looks like it's going to be... Bless you, whatever dog that was. Looks like it's going to be a little lumpy. We'll add some more fat. That was Miss B over there. Now you can kind of see it. It is. That's why I split a lot when we do these. Now we want to cook this out a little bit before we add that. Oh, yeah, it does. It just soaks in. But you want to cook it. Otherwise, your gravy will have that raw flour taste in it. Yeah. Sucked up all the fat. Yep. Man, just pour me in flour. I'll just disappear to nothing. I won't have to exercise. Is that what your doctor said today? You need to exercise. Okay. Oh. Thank, thank you for telling me that, Doc. I miss Doug so much. Doug never told me that. He did me a kid. Um, you exercise. You're lifting right now. Yeah, but he said uh, I needed 150 minutes a week with an elevated heartbeat. You know, 120. Seriously, he gave you the whole science crap. I actually threw that one in on you. He okay. Like, the, he's like, really? The elevated heart rate of over mm -hmm. 100 and... Uh-huh. 120 beats a minute? Mm-hmm. He looked at me and goes, you know what? I'm like, oh, yeah. 
do you know what I have to do? My my resting heart rate rate is like fifty eight. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have any idea what I have to do to get it to one hundred and twenty? <laughs> I think I've seen it there. <laughs> well, if I keep drinking that, it might hit there. Yeah. Yes, today this afternoon it was sixty one, and I was stressed. Yeah. So I we're adding. Beef Two stock. cups of beef stock, by the way, <laughs> to this process. To make our, our gravy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's starting to look like gravy. And if it, and here's one of, you know, this is not a perfect exact situation here. If it starts this to get too thick. Science. This is cooking. If it gets too thick, we will add more liquid. Yeah. In fact, I am going to add one wee little thing or two. Wee bit of wet wine, about a quarter of a cup. Not like we've got enough booze going on to do everything, so let's add some more. More booze. He asked me if I drank, and I said, yeah, I, I drink on Thursday nights. Yeah, these days. Yeah. Did he say, why Thursday? <laughs> he looked at me kind of funny, he goes, Thursday nights. And I'm like, yeah, because we cook on Thursday nights. Live on the interwebs, <sighs> and part of the cooking process is making a drink. To the All right, so I'm going to put these. It's my favorite part of the week. It's my favorite night of the week, that's yeah. for sure. We'll show you. Um, we're going to nestle these right oh, back in. Nice and soft. So they're, you know, sort of submerged there. Yeah. All of that yummy stuff that kind of leached out, we're going to. Pump all that back in because that is flavor. Yep, yep. And you know what we're going to do? Discard this to the sink first. I'm just watching. I'm paying attention. We're going to get our lid that's not really supposed to fit this pan, but it does. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit and cover. You don't have to cover, but it cooks faster if you do. It's better. Better. We like it that way. Okay, so now we're going to move on. So what did he say to your Thursday? We cook on Thursday nights. Oh, well, that's cool. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. You, you got, you got He's a young first, kid. First year, <laughs> resident. first year resident. Maybe 24. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. You you old fogey. Like, you know how, how the interwebs work. Old fogey. Yeah. I'm not. It gives me the... So speaking of heart rates, we're going to put some more butter in this pan. See this, Doc? More, more butter. Not quite a tablespoon there, but you got to have. Yeah, and he goes, yeah, you need to go to your, uh, your blood test. I'm like, well, I'm not doing it tomorrow, Doc, because hmm. uh, I'm going to get some liquor in me tonight. And I knew that I'd have quite a bit of butter and some other deliciousness, so. Well, that's not what would show up back tomorrow on a blood test. It would be the sugar and the alcohol that would cause yeah, you to go berserk. Yeah. And the butter. So I'm just pulling the seeds out of these cooked squash. Now, you could, these guys are not as tough as some other winter squash. You could I guess I need to show that. peel these. Yeah, I'll cut another one here. There you go. Thank you. Um, and cut them up and cook them right in the pan. It's just this is just how I do things, yeah. Um, you could add a sweet potato to this if you wanted to. I'm just deseeding and then I'll deal with the meat here in a minute. Bam. Well, Not much. Not much. Oops, in that one. Not much what? Not much seeds or not much anything? Not much seeds. Oh no, he's got plenty of meat. Um, so I'm going to add, these are kind of on the sweet side, especially after you get them cooked. So I'm going to add just a little bit of um, brown sugar because I like the maple flavor and, and honey. local honey and some salt. 
cream butter. That's about it here. Um, so if you have ever made sweet potato casserole, it's kind of what we're doing, only we're not going to bake it. Yeah. That's right. And I'm going to do this right over the pan over here. So. Yeah, Oh, I've got a seed. Um, and this is already in a nice little puree mode. If you were doing this stovetop from raw squash, you'd have to mash it or puree it somehow. All this, all we're gonna have to do with this is stir it up. Those dogs just dying over the fact that you're in the kitchen cooking and, and they can't eat what I'm cooking. Man, I'm warm. Yeah, that's a little warm. I'm gonna go open the door back here. Well, okay. You may have to let. No, I'm not. Please. Yeah, the, they'll go nuts if you open the back door. I'll survive. Try not to get any rogue seeds in because that are really. Yes, I know. I'm blocking things, but I'm right handed, so that's just how it is right I'm now. Looking, I'm showing the dogs. Oh. Especially the black one with her ear that sticks out. Oh, jeez, that dog. God love her. Poor thing. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for her sometimes. She's stuck with us. No, I think we're stuck with her. I think she's fine being stuck with us. Yeah. Every time you clang the, the pan, it's hot. The ear perks way up. So all of this, we might have gotten two cups of squash. So there's a couple servings in here. My husband can eat some vegetables like his doctor told him to today. Oh, yeah. We had vegetables on your sub sandwich. At lunchtime. Yeah. All right. All this gets discarded. I got everything. Okay. Bye bye. There's fruit in here. There is. Cherry. Uh oh. I think I dropped something. They will sniff it out. All right. So we're 43 minutes into a family feast. Oh, yeah. our plates ever come in? I didn't actually order them when it was all oh, said and done. Yeah. It's okay. That was one of those, we, do we really need this? That was, oh, that was after last Thursday night when somebody might have had a little bit. I'm adding garlic because I can. Will you put this back up, please? And then hand me the um, milk. Where'd the honey? wind up that I've got it up here um so you can go overly sweet you can go cool. overly savory you can go overly salty a little mix of in between I'll probably leave the brown sugar out to be honest <gasps> and this doesn't necessarily need milk but it'll help smooth it out a little bit yeah. I'm gonna add a little bit of heat to it yeah mm -hmm. Brown you want brown sugar in it? Okay, I'm going to add some heat with um, a little bit of a harissa spice blend. Got just a teeny tiny touch of heat to it. And it'll add a nice pretty red color. Beautiful color. And Jeff Davis wants brown sugar, so I'll unearth that here. You don't have to eat it. No. Oh, ha. So we'll put about a tablespoon of brown sugar in there. In that two servings of squash. That's perfect. I was thinking a little differently than the night that you shoveled out your car. Don't shovel out your car. What? When, I, um, when your heart rate was elevated over one point. It was that night, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, this is. Looking really good. Always go the opposite direction from when you're where your dogs are at. 
All right, so squash is done. Now I could add, if I had like twice as much, I could add an egg and then bake it for 30 minutes and it'd be this nice kind of souffle stuff. Ooh, that's not thick enough. So here's what we do when we have something that's not, nope, faster. Good job. I learned these things on this show. We're gonna couple tablespoons of water. Is that Yeah, that's fine. I just noticed the color and I was like, that's not our normal water color. Now all I'm doing is trying to get this a little thicker so I, it doesn't take much cornstarch. Always stir your cornstarch. Yeah, let the cornstarch dissolve. And that will tighten that up real well. That's a lot of gravy. From two cups of, well, it, you know. Okay, so that's that. Uh, next. Guess what I'm going to add to the pan? Mm, butter. Yep. Uh, paint that cholesterol. You know, okay, so here's the deal, guys. I don't cook like this every night. <laughs> oh, this is the one night <laughs> of the week. Yeah. <laughs> we go all out here for yeah. you guys. I No, I do not cook like this all the time. At least that's what I told my doctor. We don't cook like this a lot. I don't. We don't. You know that. He doesn't. He, and I don't care about your... Yeah, see, that got nice and... Get away from those. Thick. I I'm back here. We'll let that cook down. That those These guys are done. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. warm. Yes, Jen, that would be some gravy. Some... Mm -mm -mm. So you didn't order the, the plates? No, not after the post-Thursday night lecture I got about the paella pan, which finally did arrive, by the way. We'll show it to you another night. Yeah, I didn't lecture you about the paella pan. No, I know, but you kind of rolled your eyes. Because somebody had forgotten by Friday that we had that conversation. Okay, guys, this one super difficult. What are we making here? Corn. Corn. Super is that, difficult. Is that butter? Yeah, I got the butter. I see the butter. What kind of corn is that? Two cups of regular old Frozen. corn. Frozen it is, or, yeah. So it's straight out of the bag. It is, and because it's sat there a while, I'm going to strain it. Oh, is it a little liquid on the bottom, yeah. Because of this house is a little warmed up. You don't really want the liquid in your corn. Now, if you're just dumping corn out of a can, you know, be my guest. But I like mine a little bit. A little drier. A little drier. A little fried. Dump mm -hmm. as much or as little salt as you want. Uh, my blood pressure is perfect, that you said. So mine is too, away. so <laughs> salt away. Salt away. And... Pepper. Mm -hmm. I'm using white pepper just, you know, because I can. Because we have it. If you wanted some paprika or some heat, you know, add some. Nope, I just want butter and salt. And you already added pepper. Really. Cook until warm. That's right. So we got to plate these oh, here pretty soon? You need to go get dessert. <gasps> I'm like dying. So, it. what was the one thing? In the Hungry Man version, that every kid wanted to eat more than anything else. More than more than the Salisbury steak itself. It was brownies. The brownie. So we have this wonderful little 
a pan that made brownies and nice little square pieces that would have fit perfectly in that spot in the plants that I never ordered. Square would have fit just perfect. But we got them. We got brownies. We have extra brownies. We've already eaten four brownies. We ate four. Yeah, we ate four. Oh. Hmm. Now what else do we have? The, the plate runneth over. Mashed taters. Pre-made. So I'm waiting have, for the corn to warm up. We have the Salisbury steak. We have the mashed taters. Wait, do we, have warm? we have corn because we don't have green beans. Their green beans suck. You and I don't like green beans that much. Like, literally, I like them two ways. Yeah. And not in casserole. No, I was thinking there, there's no way in the world these brownies are going to the office tomorrow. Oh, sorry, guys. I should have read some more. Ah, maybe. Doubtful. Maybe. Doubtful. Ain't happening. Y'all know I can't bake. No, so these brownies, they were made here in this house. I did bake them in my own oven. You are correct. They on were that. baked in that oven, but they were uh, definitely not made from scratch. No, sir. But that's okay. Cause I'm okay with that. Yeah. Ooh, You've you seen know. us make all this other stuff from scratch. Not so. that we need to have dessert all the time, but I've got another dessert up my sleeve I can do. Okay. Another another Very night. Fun. So hand me a plate and I'll plate. I had to wait for a crossing to happen in front of me. I'll give you mashed taters. Ooh, we only have a couple plates up here. I bet I can find another plate. There's plenty in the dishwasher. You want to, all to. You want to go back to the... Okay. Go back to there. Oh, hold on. Go down a little bit. There we go. So that's an ice cream scoop. Oh, it's fine. Oh, I got it. All right. So ice cream scoop goes straight in the mashed taters. And dollop. Uh oh, <laughs> I lost a piece of it. And then divot. Dollop and then divot. Dollop then divot. You can really see that Peter's on a white plate. Right, well, that. you that's okay. And then we're going to. I've lost my. I don't have these. The, I've lost this right here. Oh. I got it. You want two? Uh, yeah. Of course I want. Nope. Just having, We're just going to have to go old school things. here. And then we're going to have a ladle. Corn me first. I don't want the, the squash yet. That's what I'm going to do. Corn you first. Okay. Corn first. I'll come back for seconds on that. It's fine. You don't need to. I didn't make the squash for you. I, know, I, I made the squash them. to show how to make squash squash. I want some, but, you know. You'll pick the mushrooms out later. I will. There's a whole bunch of them there. Oh my. Look at all those onions. Hot. Hot damn. Salisbury steak. See, they kind of shrunk up a little bit. A little bit. Mashed potatoes. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, crap, there's like no room for it. Okay. It might yeah. get a little gravy. That's corn. Hungry man. Right there. That's better than hungry man. There you go. Of course. I'm about to croak. Okay. All good. Whew. Mercy. What <laughs> did you already leave to go eat? I just have to eat here. Get it out. Out the way. <laughs> Set it down. All right, guys. <laughs> we are warm. The kitchen is warm right now. 55 minutes in, we're under an hour. Under an hour, we have a plate of food. And, and you know what? Here's the deal it takes us an hour for this because we do this a lot and we do this a lot. Um, this comes together in less than 30 minutes. The, those Salisbury steak don't take long when you make them a little bit on the thinner side. And gravy certainly doesn't take long. So you're easily, you know, this is something you can do 30 from scratch. 40 minutes. Yeah, from scratch. And uh, 
just add time for booze. Just add time for you know, booze. There's always time for booze. Oh always. my gosh. I think I'm maybe on that note, I'm going to get my booze. Yeah, you're hurt. You know, I didn't get more. Man, you working tomorrow? Yeah, I'm thirsty though. You going to eat that cherry? Mm-hmm. You never did touch the iced tea. That's next. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, whew, we'll figure out next week. Maybe not quite so many pieces because, man, Mama's hot here. Sorry. That's okay. Um, it's delicious. It's, it's it going to be delicious. It smells amazing. I'm going to enjoy it. The dogs are already staring at it. Oh, yeah. He had to set it towards the middle of the table. So yeah. I caught Miss B, by the way. I laid an empty package of... Mm-hmm something on the end table and yeah. man she got right up there and just went town on the empty package. I'm sure she did. I'm looking at Yeah, she's good about that. Correct. <laughs> you guys need to know all of the dog drama. Yeah. All right. We will see you guys next week. Have no idea what we're gonna fix. We'll figure that out. <laughs> Probably something involving not as much heat. Pork. Pork? Yeah. Pork. Pork. What kind of pork? Oh pork. Okay. Pork rhymes with fork. Pork does rhyme with pork. Better yet What's your favorite part of a pork? Bacon. 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 We'll do something with bacon and pork. Bacon is my favorite part of the pig for sure. But I don't know what kind of vegetable. Um, Bacon hearts. (laughs) I don't think that counts. I don't know. (laughs) We'll figure it out because there's like three vegetables he likes. And potatoes is one of them. (laughs) Which is why I made mashed potatoes. Before Again. we got started tonight. Again. <laughs> All right. But, have a good week. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Enjoy the warm weather if you have it. And we will see you guys next week. Yep. Enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye. Good night.